What is going on guys? Benny here. We are here today to talk about this guy, the Ship Mjolnir 2 headphone amplifier. Let's get into it after the intro. Alright guys, we are here today to talk about this beautiful piece of gear, the Ship Mjolnir 2. So just to give, give you guys an idea, I did reach out to Shit Audio to um, get this guy because I wanted to hear it for myself. And they sent this to me and the Gungnir Multibit 2 that I did do a review of previously. I'll put that up in a card up here and you can go check that, that guy out. Um, but with that, this was something they did recommend and it is something they did love in terms of the sound. And for me, I haven't listened to many tube amplifiers, only ones like for guitars and things like that, but nothing for uh, headphones specifically. I have listened to some for speakers, but mostly but none for headphones. So this is technically my first one. Thank you for sending it to me, shit. Um, and this is a beautiful piece of shit, that's for sure. So with that so with this guy basically what it is let's kind of go over the build of this guy and kind of what it, how it gets powered and everything like that so with this guy since this is a hybrid tube amplifier what that means is it uses a solid state power section and then in terms of the amplifier section where it goes through to to get to your headphones it goes through the tubes and then out into your headphones so it does tubey things and then goes into your headphones. I said headphones a lot there. Um, so with that, one of the best things about that does is having a solid state power section instead of it just being a regular tube amplifier is you can get lots of power into this and push lots of power out. So something that's great about it is you get the tube sound mixed with the power. So I do believe, I'm not gonna go over all the specifications. I will put that down below in the description. Um, I'll, give, I'll put a link to the specifications and the product itself. But I do believe into 32 ohm, this guy does six watts. And that's a lot. <laughs> if you didn't know that it kind of powers everything, even when you start going up the the, the ohm range. Again, look down below specifically for the power, but in terms of all the headphones I did test with this, it can power almost anything and everything well. So, the way I did test this guy, just to let you guys know, is I did test it a lot with the Gungnir Multibit, and that's kind of how it is, because it's meant to be a stack, and that's how I used it most of the time. But with some of the other gear I did get in, I did switch in other DACs with this. And in terms of the best sound out of all of them, having the Gungnir Multibit send this guy signal, it goes hand in hand and sounds the best for sure. So with that, let's go over the build of the guy. So with this, they have, they like with all shit products, it's made out of this big huge piece of aluminum it does have a little bit of a separation there with four feet on the bottom but mostly made out of metal uh, so with this guy you have a gigantic volume knob up front then you have a high and low gain switch and then also a input switch which is also so you can choose between uh, balanced input into this device or single-ended. And then for the outputs for your headphones, you have balanced XLR and single-ended quarter inch. So, and then on the top here, I'll angle this towards you guys. Big piece here, obviously shit audio logo. Um, some venting for heating and then the tube section over here. So this side is really heavy because the, the power um, section is on this side. So, like, like on the bottom again, four feet, four rubber feet, 
separate section. Let's turn it around here and let's go from left to right for you guys. So XLR balanced input, single ended RCA input, and then what are these guys? So we have balanced XLR output as well as single ended uh, output as well. So you can use this guy as a preamplifier as well. And it's great that they do put both balanced and single ended here, which is a great um, thing. And then you have the little power switch with all hip products is on the back. All right, so in terms of build quality, this guy is built like a freaking tank. It's huge. My end game for sure. Story time. Um, I did have one of my friends come over to see what they could tell me in terms of uh, what they could hear. So I, I grabbed one of my other solid state headphone amplifiers as well as one of my other decks. And with that, I had him listen to that to songs that he knew. And then I had him listen to three or four songs that he thought he knew quite well, is a better way to put it. And when I put him after that, had him listen to those songs three times, three to four times each, just so he can familiarize himself and be like, okay, yeah, that sounds correct and accurate. So then when I put him through the paces of the Gungnir multi-bit with this guy, there are things he noticed right off the bat. One of the things that this and the Gungnir do, but when they're in tandem together, do even better and give you a lot more of is sound stage. And then one of the other things that's great that tubes do is it makes things sound even more lively in terms of being li li there live, not like super energetic, but in terms of being live performance, it makes it sound more that way because it does give it more decay. And then it also gives it more space and air to breathe just as if the, just like the Gungnir multi-bit does in a nutshell. But with them to two together, it just stacks that on literally and makes it sound more so. So what he, a lot of the things he listens to were, were rock, metal, and then some jazz he's been kind of getting into because of me. Um, but he noticed that it does all those things. And he's not even an audiophile, he could just feel it. And then I had him listen to a few of tracks that I like in terms of vocals, specifically uh, deeper male vocals like Johnny Cash, um, very kind of scratchy singers, I would say, that are women, such as Haley Reinhardt. I love Haley Reinhardt, as well as, uh, uh, what is that one? Freya Ridings, which is a kind of a indie folk singer as well um very haunting vocals very beautiful i would recommend listening to those but i did have him listen to those as well and he and it it does the thing with having the gun your multi bit and this guy together the mjolnir 2 is it takes you out of your head of trying to analyze and even when he was trying to analyze to, to find differences he, he started to notice that he would, uh, I did too, that he would just kind of close his eyes and get lost in the music. And that is what these two together do so well, is when you're sitting there trying to analyze, at least me anyways, that when I try to sit there to analyze the highs, the mids, the lows, bass extension, resolution, Every, all the things that us audiophiles do to pick apart things to give you guys um, what we experienced, I tended to just kind of close my eyes and disappear into the music. And that's something with the, those, these two together, even this guy just alone with a different DAC, but again, having them together is probably the sweetest thing in terms of listening. Uh, so again, with that, let's kind of go over sound now. Now that I kind of did go over, these are the things we look for. So in terms of the lows, um, and 
uh, with that. The Lowe's, it, it has a lot of weight to it, a lot of richness. It does this thing where if, if a digital recording or something off Tidal, Amazon, or Spotify, I did test it with all three, uh, Tidal and Amazon did sound better than Spotify with the hi-fi recordings as well as Koba's, better. They're all great. But in terms of Spotify, it is the lowest on the list for, um, I would say, quality. So with that, in terms of the lows, again, richness, not the fastest bass. It's not supposed to because you have those tubes there. But it does do this thing where if you have a very bad recording or it's just not recorded well even, what it'll do is it will... Um, if the song feels compressed in the low area, even with a very analytical type of headphone amp or DAC, it will kind of overdo the lows a little bit, but that's more so the recording and the music, not so much these two, to two together. But it does emphasize that more where it feels like there's so much bass and so much richness and suppleness to the music that it's overpowering, but it really is just the recording of the specific songs and music. So with that, this, in terms of the mids, the mids are sweet. They, they do this thing where they, especially with, with vocals, it, it draws you in. It makes you feel like that person is, the way it's recorded, if it, they're on a stage, it makes you feel like you're there. You're, you're very much there, sitting in there, especially when there's very good reverb and very good echo and all those things that make you feel like you're, like you're in a very big sense of space. This makes you feel like you're there. If you're listening to something more intimate, like Haley Reinhardt, when you're, she's sitting in a room, like in a jazz lounge, something like that, it makes you feel like you're sitting in a jazz lounge. <laughs> so it's not perfect sounding. It's not the best measuring, but it's not supposed to be that. It's supposed to make you feel like you're there. So in terms of the mids, great. Highs, so let's get to the highs. So with the highs with this guy, again, just like with the gun gear, I wouldn't say they're rolled off in the highs because the resolution and the detail are still there. It just brings it down ever so slightly. So if you have like a recording that's kind of shouty and hurts your ears, it kind of like cuts that little part off and smooths it off. And that's something that's great about this guy, especially when it comes to, if you're listening to not an imperfect recording to something that, let's say in the live recording, the singer or even um, some of the cymbals and stuff weren't recorded correctly. It, it smooths all that out and makes it sound good. So it just does, it does what the Gungnir Multivit does on its own, but makes it that much better. And it's something that you can't, it's not really hearing it, hearing it. It's feeling it. So when it comes to that, this guy and the Gungnir Multibit, if you want something that sounds more analog, quote unquote analog, th these two together are the prime example of doing it right. And me to let these two things go is going to break my heart and, <laughs> and I'm going to be like, no, what? What is gonna, what's, what am I gonna listen to now? It's gonna sound like crap. It's not necessarily that. It's just, again, the Gungnir Multibit with this guy, do it right. So when it comes to the listener, if you want something that sounds natural and like you're there, like a live performance, and you don't want some, and you need a lot of power, or you want something that has so much power you won't ever need anything else. This guy for sure. Um, so when it comes to recommending this guy, 
I couldn't recommend it more than anything. <laughs> this is, again, like I said at the earlier part of the review, this guy will be my end game with the Gungnir Multibit. It's something that I strive to have now. <laughs> um, and I'm looking forward to hearing some of the other amazing things that shit has. Um, again, this is a great piece of shit. The Gungnir Multibit is a great piece of shit. And when it comes to shit audio, I know they've had their kind of, they're the guys that actually got me into audio. Like I said in the Gungnir Multibit review so having they've had their ups and downs with things sounding good it sounded really good off the gate made in america all the awesome things and then uh, when they they kind of fell off for a couple of years in terms of sound quality and then now they're back in the game again and everything sounds great again so with that i do have to say the Gungnir Multibit and this guy together do get very warm. <laughs> um, not so hot to the touch where you can't touch it, but it does get very warm and it does pull a lot of power out of the wall from what I did notice. And I did test it on my computer back here for most of the review. Uh, so with that guys, I would say again, I recommend this wholeheartedly to the emotional listener, not the analytical listener. And with that, guys, I'll I'll I'll, I'll send you over like I did earlier um, to my other reviews up here and here. Please subscribe, thumbs up the video if you liked it, and I will see you guys in the next review, which is real soon. Have a great rest of your day or night if you're listening to this. Have a good one guys.